A distinguishing characteristic of the human race is our desire to communicate with one another. For thousands, perhaps even hundreds of thousands of years, we would gather around in a circle, around a fire, a tree stump, or maybe a stone table, and talk. We discussed the day's events, or made plans for the future. This simple model of social collaboration has stood the test of time, and we still use it today, echoing back to our ancestors millennia ago. The concept of gathering around is still very much with us today. We like to gather around the dining table, discussing news or the day's events, or perhaps making plans. Sports teams are often seen gathered round in a huddle. It may be for motivation at the start of the match, or to agree the next play, or to celebrate a score. In the office, too, we like to gather round the table for meetings and business discussions, strongly believing that eye contact imparts trust and sincerity. There are, of course, many different types of business meeting. And here we will focus on smaller meetings whose primary purpose is to collaborate. This involves the exchange of views and ideas, often backed up with a variety of different content. To ensure optimum success for the meeting, we need to consider the overall meeting experience, making it as natural as possible. We also need to look at the room layout, the technology being used, and the ways and means of sharing any content participants may have brought along. The concept of gathering around for a meeting may not have changed for thousands of years, but, of course, the technology we use within a business meeting has changed. It is now fairly common to have a teleconference meeting where a conferencing telephone is placed in the centre of the meeting table with all the local participants gathered around the phone, communicating with others at one or more remote locations. The technology used in meetings has also evolved. It is now quite common to see people using their smartphone rather than a standard conference phone as part of a business meeting. However, the principle remains the same. The smartphone is still placed in the centre of the meeting, effectively making it the centre of gravity for this meeting. This is almost a subconscious action as we inherently know that the best and most natural collaborative communication requires the device to be placed in the middle of the table. However, as technology has advanced further, and we have moved from teleconference to video conference, a change in behaviour has been forced upon us. Early video systems mimicked the TV in our homes, with the screen mounted on the wall or on a stand. The obvious place for the camera in this instance was on the top of the screen, and thus the standard video room configuration that we know today was born. A screen and camera on the one side and people on the other. The prevalence of laptops in the workplace and the availability of quality desktop video applications has led to a new dynamic in video conferencing. Multiple people crowded in front of a single small screen. In some cases, this may indeed be convenient, but it is not natural. The setup is uncomfortable for many of the participants, not just physically, but also in terms of personal space invasion. Furthermore, the user at the remote location just sees a blur of faces, photobombing if you will, and this does not present the professional image most of us wish to portray in a serious business meeting. This type of layout is sometimes referred to as a huddle, but as we have discussed before, a huddle implies a group of people in a circle around a device or table, not a number massed in front of one small screen. So I ask you, which is more natural? Gathering together in a circle around a table, whether with friends, family or a workplace team, or staring at a screen on the wall, cricking necks and twisting backs. I'm sure most people would prefer the former. Some technology manufacturers have recognised that the natural way for humans to collaborate is to be in a circle. There have been various attempts to produce video technology that can sit in the centre of the meeting, just as an audio conference device would do. However, historically, these systems have failed to deliver a true natural experience to the customer. By placing the microphone and camera in the centre of the table, but still having the screen on the wall, these solutions force participants to look away from the camera in order to see the screen. In addition, this scenario often means that the remote users are therefore viewing 
the side of the head of the local users. Looking at a close-up of someone's ear is hardly conducive to a good meeting. It certainly does not present a professional image. A few years ago, Polycom, now known as Poly, introduced the Centro. This was the centre of room system. Deployment was based on users sitting on sofas or armchairs around the unit, or placing it in the centre of a horseshoe arrangement commonly used in training rooms. This offered users a far more natural experience for their video meetings. However, in a business context, it is very rare to be sitting on sofas, not least because of some simple practical issues, such as where to put a notebook or a cup of coffee. Given the choice, would you prefer to sit in a video meeting where you have to swivel your neck or even your whole body to view the screen and to be seen on the camera? Or would you prefer a more natural experience? A room layout where you can sit comfortably around the table, easily able to view the far end participants as well as those in the room with you. It is natural versus unnatural, comfort versus discomfort. What should a centre of table system look like? To answer this question, it helps to consider what a standard video conferencing setup contains. Firstly, there is the video codec itself, which is the, is the technology behind video conferencing. There is a high definition camera in order to see the people in the room. There is a screen on which local participants can see the remote users. Ideally, that screen should also be an interactive whiteboard system, or at least convertible into one, to aid content sharing. Content sharing is further enhanced by a presentation system that allows the connectivity of laptops and other devices via HDMI, VGA or wireless. Nowadays, such a system should also support smart devices such as phones and tablets. The system also consists of speakers to hear the far end and a microphone or an array of microphones to pick up local speech. Combined, these two items effectively create a traditional speakerphone. Finally, there may be a system to record the call, not just the audio, but the video and the content as well. Setting all of this up per room requires a lot of time and effort, as well as a lot of cables. A true center of table system should be an all-in-one device, combining all of these elements into one simple unit, and ideally with one cable just for power. For many people, one of the prime advantages of traditional face-to-face -face meetings is the ability to look someone directly in the eye. Many video conferencing systems do not offer a good eye contact experience. We have all been in video meetings where we look at distant shadowy figures, tops of heads and even up noses. With a centre of table system, the camera is positioned at a height of about 16 inches which is eye level for most people sitting at a meeting table. This gives the impression to users at the far end that they are looking directly into the user's eyes, even when they are actually looking at somebody else across the table. Thus, using a center of table video offers excellent eye contact and therefore a much more natural experience. Most meetings today involve some form of content to be shared. Typically, these are PowerPoint presentations, Excel spreadsheets, or pictures and videos. All video systems have an ability to share this content one way or another, but they do have one major drawback. Most presenters feel more comfortable and more natural standing in front of the screen so that they can point out certain areas of interest, as shown in, on the, in the picture on the left. However, as soon as the presenter stands up, they are typically out of the field of view of the camera and therefore invisible to those at the far end. Moreover, they are also blocking the screen from others in the same room. On the other hand, a true center of table video system with touch screens allows the presenter to remain seated, but still be able to annotate the screen, be seen by all remote participants and not block the view of others in the room. A fundamental benefit of center of table systems is their ability to save space and as a result, save money. The space required for the large screen on the wall, not to mention the cost to install it safely, all adds up to a significant price on top of the base purchase price. It is worth spending a little time looking at the sizing of the rooms necessary for a centre of table system and a traditional room system. We will assume a room for eight people. 
On the right hand side of this slide, we have the traditional room with a 55 inch screen mounted on one wall. For a screen of this size, the standards suggest a distance of about 1.5 meters to the first person sitting at the table. Of course, this layout means that the furthest person is 3.5 meters away from the screen. Allowing for the table, movement around chairs, etc., the minimum room size is 19 meters squared. With the center of table system, on the other hand, each user is equidistant from the screen, about 73 centimeters or arm's reach. In this scenario, the room size requirement is just 11 meters squared. Having compared the size of the rooms necessary for each type of system, it is interesting to now do a price comparison. Assuming a price of 500 pounds per meter squared per calendar month, which is typical for central London or New York, then we can see that a center of table system will cost about 6,200 pounds per calendar month, whilst the traditional room system costs over 10,000 pounds. A centre of table system pays for itself in two months in this scenario. The savings can be even greater when you consider that most centre of table systems are mobile, easily moved from room to room, unlike traditional installations, which are static. No one should ever feel uncomfortable in a business meeting. Well, at least not because of the technology and the furniture. The content of the meeting itself is another thing entirely. Look at these images showing people gathered in traditional conferencing setups. See how they have to twist them at their bodies to see the screen. This is not natural and far from comfortable. Indeed, such deployments could even lead to long-term back and neck issues, which, of course, was never the intention. With a true centre of table collaboration system, professional meetings become professional gatherings. The meeting experience is more natural, more intuitive, more pleasant and more interactive. As a result, these gatherings are more effective, more efficient and more productive. The Silex Pro PTE is a true centre of table collaboration system. An all-in-one unit, it is codec independent, which means it can run all the popular video conferencing systems such as Zoom, Microsoft, Poly, Cisco, Pexip and the others. The PTE has three or four touchscreens and a Sennheiser speakerphone. The lift and table are optional. 